Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno, the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, we're going to be talking about dressing for a military wedding. All right, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. By doing that, these videos will come right to you. In addition, if you like this video, if you find it useful, I would appreciate it if you would like it right down there. And last but not least, if you want to learn more about men's style, I've got a free 47-page ebook. It's awesome. Make sure to grab it. The link's right down there. All right, this is the question that came in. Hi, Antonio. Thank you for the great style advice. I'm a pilot in the Royal Australian Air Force, a lieutenant about to get married. I want to throw a military wedding, but I've got a few questions. First, what do you think about this whole military wedding thing? Should we dress in mess dress or class A uniform? How should civilians dress when attending this wedding? I was thinking to make even a tailored replica of the uniform so it would look better. And I, but I hesitate though, because I don't even know if I should carry my sword or even to go through with this. Thank you very much. All right, I left the gentleman's name out so we can remain anonymous, but I can tell you that my thoughts on a military wedding are, hell yeah. Military weddings are awesome. <laughs> and there are very few people in the world who are ever afforded the opportunity. I wish I could have had my military wedding. And the reason I didn't is I got married right after I left the service. I was in the former Soviet Union, you know, being a military, American military officer and getting married in, uh, especially when there were people attending that were, let's just say, uh, former Spetsnaz. It's one of those things I didn't really want to, want to push, my, uh, push my luck there and you know, get too drunk and wind up in the back alley. No, no, seriously, it's something I look back on and I wish I would have been married and with my wife at the time that I would have been in the Marine Corps for certain events like this, when you can have a wedding, when you can have take her to the ball or some of these events, which are almost gone in the civilian world. I mean, who out there has the chance to go to a ball or some of the parties that we were privileged enough to be able to attend in the military? So my quick answer is, don't even think about it. This is going to be awesome. It's a once in a lifetime thing and you are going to be able to take it up to a whole nother level because you're going to be able to wear your uniform. So let's talk quickly about, you know, my thoughts on the uniform and what you should go with. I was in the United States Marine Corps and we get married normally in our dress blues. We also had a dress white, which was a white trouser with the blue top and that looked well or looked really good, especially when the bride was wearing white. I would look at what do you think is going to look great with her outfit and you know not to color not to coordinate but you're looking to complement and there's a big difference so you just want to make sure that you don't wear something that is too much of a contrast i see army gentlemen here in the united states whether they be enlisted or an officer they get married in their greens and those look pretty good as well so i'm you know in any case what you want to keep is uniform across the board and get out the message to the guests, especially if there's going to be a lot of military attending so that everyone shows up in the same uniform. That's going to look better and you're not going to make, have anyone feel out of place. And you also want to pay attention to what uniform is the most common because if you choose a very uncommon uniform, you don't want to have a whole bunch of guys having to go out and buy something which they may never use again because another big benefit of doing a military wedding is you've already got the outfit. You've already got the clothing. And I would say Instead of having a replica built that is maybe a bit more tailored, look to have what you've already got and take it to go get adjusted. Again, this is a one day and I would say to take that extra money that you're going to save and spend it, spend it on booze or spend it on some great food. Have a good time. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime affair. Uh, and again, I want to stress that very few people can do it. I, I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could have had one. Uh, you know, something, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it might be my wife and I were going to get married for the third time, which we've never been divorced, but we like to get married uh, again and again. It's a lot of fun. We're going to have our 10th wedding anniversary and get remarried in Hawaii. So I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll dress in my uniform. Now nah, I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear a bathing suit or something. <laughs> okay. So what about the guests? What are the guests going to wear when they attend the wedding? If it's, you know, just let people know, I wouldn't go black tie, even though you technically could, especially you went with a mess dress uniform. I'm just going to say dark suits. Keep it simple, but also pay attention. You're down in Australia, so the seasons are off here. If you're going to be getting married soon, I think it's pretty warm right there. So, and it also depends on where you're at. I mean, if you're in Darwin or if you're in Sydney, obviously very different dress codes, a different type of feel. So pay attention to that. I would keep it though probably dark suits to at least, you know, at least a suit. And uh, you had a question. You were hesitating about carrying a sword. I say carry your sword. And this is the reason. A sword only has value that we attribute to it. So when a sword is first made 
And you know, no matter how expensive it is, it is just a piece of metal. But when it goes through these events in life with you, all of a sudden, it becomes an heirloom. You attach value to that, and that's why it has value. So all of a sudden, when you pass that on to your son, if he decides to go into the military, I know in the Marine Corps, you can actually pass your sword on to your son, even if it's not regulation size, because you're supposed to have a certain size for your build, you can actually have it if it was your father's. And something like that, I, I love the fact that you would be able to have something that you would be able to look at and have very fond memories of. Um, you know, so, <laughs> Here's my sword, by the way. You know, I uh, actually just have it in my office. It's a uh, it's a great reminder of, uh, gosh, of where I come from and what I've done. And I, you know, something like this, I give it value because of the experiences I had in the Marine Corps and the men and women I was a, I was privileged to serve with. So I hope that uh, you decide to carry your sword. Be careful about local regulations. And if need be, you know, keep them out in the vehicles. And I don't know if you'll be allowed to take them in the church. You may have to have them afterwards. Consider a sword arch. So this is where you have officers or enlisted. It can be a combination of both, are on both sides. And as you're coming out, they pull out their swords and they arch them up and you and your bride go right underneath. And don't forget, you need to have someone designated who will uh, swing his sword and hit the wife on the uh, backside for you. That's I don't know, Marine Corps tradition. I don't know if you guys do that down under, but uh, maybe start the tradition down there. At the end of the day, if you have this opportunity, go for it. it. Wearing military uniforms to a wedding, I think also loosens them up, gives people a feeling of really what life is about, and that's being close to friends and family and celebrating you know, this limited time we have here. All right, this has been Antonio Centeno with Real Men Real Style. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.